Are sirtuins overhyped, or can they actually play a role in fat loss? Can they play a role in how our metabolism works? They're talked about everywhere right now, right? Because Adele lost a lot of weight doing what's called the cert food diet, so which is eating a lot of foods that activate sirtuins. That gets a lot of people thinking, right? Are sirtuins sort of a magic ticket for fat loss? We have to really investigate things because sirtuins are powerful, and there's a lot of evidence that's suggesting that, based upon some of Dr. David Sinclair's work and really some pretty big journals publishing some cool stuff. But there's also a lot of overhype, like the cert food diet. Like it is being overhyped. It's not a magic bullet, but it is something that could play a role. So let's break down how sirtuins play a role in your metabolism, especially as you get older. So sirtuins are a family of signaling proteins. Okay, these are proteins that get activated by NAD. Okay, and I'll explain more about that in a minute. But basically, these are proteins that get activated and then go along and trigger a cascade of different effects: metabolic effects, potential longevity effects, and all this. And there's a lot of evidence, especially in mice, but now there's some good evidence in humans. So to make matters very simple, a lot of the basic evidence suggests that okay, when you are in a caloric deficit or when you are fasting. You get potential metabolic and potential longevity effects because you have more energy available. That's normally used for digestion and metabolism. You have more energy available to activate these things called sirtuins that then go to work and potentially activate longevity genes and potentially activate、um, metabolic drivers like PGC1A. But let me explain in a very simple sense. Like, why do we gain weight as we get older, and how do sirtuins play a role with that? Well, first we look at like muscle loss. Like as we get older, we start to lose muscle. So that means that we have less caloric expenditure, less tissue burning up calories. That means that it's easier to end up in a surplus. But that's not the end-all, be-all. There's more to it than just that. It's very easy to speculate and say that NAD and sirtuins are very important factors as to why we may gain weight easier as we get older. You see, we have these things called PARPs. Okay, PARPs protect our DNA. They protect our DNA from mutation. And as we get older, we definitely have more mutation occurring. It's a natural part of getting older. So it's easy to assume that, of course, PARPs are going to get called into action more because as we get older and we have more DNA mutation, PARPs have to protect that more because we get older, right? Here's the caveat. Okay, NAD that I was talking about, NAD that fuel source really, NAD is required for PARPs to do their job. So as we get older, these PARPs are taking a lot of that NAD, that NAD that would normally be activating sirtuins. Okay, so as we get older, yes, we have less NAD available for sirtuins and more NAD available just for, you know, DNA protection. That can play a role. In our metabolic shift, so we do need to do what we can to increase our levels of NAD. That's why I typically recommend fasting. Why I typically recommend intense exercise. Why I recommend caloric restriction. I recommend a lot of you know different supplementation and things like that. Today's video is sponsored by Verso, which is my recommended nicotinamide mononucleotide (NMN), which you've probably heard talked about quite a bit. NMN can potentially increase those NAD levels, and in a supplement form, it's the one that I use. Right? It's something that I've been experimenting with for over a year, and I think it's very fascinating. So they are a sponsor of today's video. They do not diagnose, treat, cure any disease, anything like that. But when you're experimenting with this stuff, I definitely recommend you check them out. Before I get into more detail about how this whole process works, I put a link down below so that you can save a little bit of cash if you want to get one. So Verso is a very unique NMN in that it's combined. With what's called trans resveratrol. Now, resveratrol has its own bodies of research in the world of sirtuin activation. Plus, Verso is kept refrigerated and shipped quickly so that you can keep it cool. Because NMN really should be kept that way. So they're one of the only organizations that is actually doing it right. So anyway, that link is down below, and a big thank you to them for the continued support on this channel and for the sponsorship and for letting us create the content we do. So let's look at the effect of sirtuins on the metabolism. This is where things get pretty interesting. There was a study that was published in the journal Cell Metabolism. Now this one looked at mice. Okay, a lot of studies do look at mice, but I'll get to the human stuff in a minute. Okay, and it pharmaceutically activated sirt1. 
Okay, so these sirtuins, right? One of them is called SIRT1. They used a drug to activate it. So they didn't do it via the diet. They're like, let's take a shortcut and activate sirtuins. Well, they found that this drastically improved their endurance performance, and it dramatically helped protect them from diet-induced obesity. So when their sirtuins were activated, they not only performed better, but they had more resiliency against gaining weight and becoming obese. Also increased the oxidative metabolism of their brown fat and increased the oxidative metabolism of their muscle. Essentially, you know, make a long story short, increasing the metabolism, increasing how much was able to be burned in the muscle and the brown fat. But what I get most excited about is there is an increase in the activity of what is called FOXO1. So in humans, something very similar called FOXO3 is responsible for supporting the metabolism, but also very powerful antioxidant defense. So just by activating sirtuins in these mice, they saw like a wide spectrum improvement in just seems like life in general, but this was in mice. So then we look at in humans, Okay. In humans, there is some data. There's a study that's published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism. This is one of the first human studies that showed evidence of sirtuins having an interplay with the metabolism. And it's fascinating because they took obese subjects and they had them go in a pretty drastic weight loss regime for 12 months. So they didn't induce sirtuins by any drug or anything like that. They measured their sirtuins at baseline and then they measured their sirtuins after they lost weight. Now here's what was really interesting, is they found that not all sirtuins are created equal. There's seven different sirtuins. And in obese people, they found that sirtuin one, sirtuin three, and sirtuin seven were all very low. But the other sirtuins weren't that different, right? So it goes to show that they don't all do the same thing, but obese people, the most powerful ones that are heavily researched, seemed to be low. But there is something very important that we need to note here. There is something called NAMPT. NAMPT is required for NAD to form, okay? So NAD, remember that very important battery pack that we need for different things to do their job. Without NAMPT, NAD can't be formed. Obese people had low levels of NAMPT, so they already couldn't build a whole lot of NAD to begin with, let alone use extra NAD to activate sirtuins. So it was like a double whammy. So after 12 months, these obese subjects lost on average 11.7% of their body weight. Huge reductions in weight. And along with that, what did they see? They saw increases in sirtuin activation. Okay, well we definitely see here that when people lose weight, sirtuins get activated more. But there was also an increase in NAMPT. So not only were more sirtuins activated, but more potential to make NAD was activated or unleashed. So as we get older, if we potentially lose weight, we have a lot of potential benefit to improve our NAD levels and improve sirtuin activation. So maybe losing weight as we get older can potentially affect longevity and aging. There was also a study that was published in the Journal of Frontiers in Endocrinology. This one's fascinating because it took a look at anorexic people, normal weight people, and obese people. Okay, and they found that anorexic people had the highest levels of sirtuins because there's less energy coming in, just like with fasting, right? Doesn't mean it's healthy, but in this case, anorexics had really high sirtuins, normal weight people had moderately high sirtuins, and guess what? Obese people had very low levels of sirtuins. So we know there is once again a link there. But then that begs the question, is this just a consequence of weight loss? Like, if we lose weight, do our sirtuins change? And that's very valid. That's what I would say. I'd say, okay, cool. We just see here that when we lose weight, we activate sirtuins. So motivation to lose weight. But does activating sirtuins ahead of time potentially stimulate weight loss? Well, that first study that I referenced, the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism, thought ahead on this. They said, we want to see who regains weight and who does not regain weight or actually continues to lose weight. So they divided them into two groups like that. And they found that the group that continued to lose weight after the 12 months had higher levels of sirtuins at baseline when they started. Okay, those that regained weight had lower levels of sirtuins at baseline at the beginning. So that does potentially demonstrate that if the sirtuins are higher, you have more potential to lose weight. Now, it's, what's this study suggesting, but it doesn't mean it's the concrete truth. So now we have to dive a little bit deeper, and I hope you're still with me on this because this is fascinating stuff. We have to look at the molecular actions and what's really happening here. Why could we speculate that there's an interplay there? Well, if we look at the study that was published in the journal Cell Metabolism, this was done in mice, but it still could potentially interplay with humans. Okay, they found that sirtuin activation increases what's called the deacetylation 
of PGC1A. What the heck does that mean? Well, PGC1A is very important, and PGC1A needs to get into the nucleus of a cell to activate mitochondrial like biogenesis, to allow our mitochondria, our energy powerhouse, where we burn fat, where we burn carbs. If we want more mitochondria, more fat burning factories, more carb burning factories, we need more PGC1A. Well, PGC1A cannot do its job unless it is deacetylated, and sirtuins can deacetylate PGC1A. So, in essence, we can elucidate that by activating sirtuins, we potentially increase how much mitochondrial mass we have. We increase how many factories we have to potentially burn fat and glucose. But there's a caveat, okay? Sirtuins cannot do their job without NAD. Okay? It's like having a, like a sirtuin can't just magically go fix everything because it needs energy from NAD. It's like having a drill, but not having a battery pack in the drill. It's like, I've got this tool to go do amazing things, activate longevity genes, activate mitochondrial biogenesis and all this stuff, but without NAD, that sirtuin is worthless. So there needs to be somewhat of a caloric deficit for that kind of thing to work. Right? So it's a which came first, the chicken or the egg kind of thing. You can activate sirtuins, but if you're not actually putting yourself in a deficit, then you don't ever put the battery pack in the drill to do the job. So the case in point with all this is do things, of course, to activate sirtuins. Utilize proper supplementation. Utilize intense activity. Utilize periods of caloric restriction. Utilize fasting. Utilize these things. But you have to occasionally do things to increase NAD support, right? To increase NAD levels. So you do need to periodically put yourself in a deficit to allow this to work. There's one more very important study that I want to end with. Okay, this was another mouse study, but I found it fascinating. Okay, it was published in the journal Aging Cell. Okay, they overexpressed CERT1 in mice, which means that they activated it through the roof. So they had this overexpression, not just a little expression. Okay, they found that their performance athletically was through the roof, like insanely improved their performance. It also made them much more metabolically active, okay? And it also improved their fasting insulin levels and their fasting glucose levels. Okay, this is with a pharmaceutically induced overexpression, but it was a very clear indicator that there is some potential for youth to be on our side a little bit more when sirtuins are properly activated, whether it's pharmaceutically, or through proper exercise, proper nutrition. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.